as effective as uh, all of them both. That's right. That'll get you a message that all the eloquence in the world won't bring, because uh, the fellow will be coming to you then instead of you calling him. And it's very interesting, Mr. President, to notice that the only state that you didn't carry in the South by the state have less than 40% of the Negroes registered to vote. It's very interesting to notice that. I think a professor at the University of Texas in a recent article brought this out very clearly uh, so it demonstrates that uh, it's so important to get Negroes registered to vote in large numbers in the South and it will be this coalition of the Negro vote and the moderate white vote that will really make the new South. That's exactly right. I think it's very important that we not to say that we're doing this and we not do it just because it's Negroes or whites, but we take the position that every person born in this country, when it reaches a certain age, uh, that he have a right to vote, just like he has a right to fight, and uh, that we just uh, extend it, whether it's a Negro, or whether it's a Mexican, or who it is. And number two, I think that uh, uh, we don't want special privilege for anybody. We want equality for all, and we can stand on that principle. But I think if you can uh, contribute a great deal by getting your leaders and you yourself taking very simple examples of uh, discrimination where a man's got to memorize uh, Longfellow, or whether he's got to quote the uh, uh, the uh, first uh, uh, ten amendments, or he's got to uh, tell you what uh, Amendment 15, 16, 17 is, and then ask them if they know and show uh, what happens. And uh, uh, some some people don't have to do that, but when a Negro comes in, he's got to do it. And if we can just repeat and repeat and repeat, I don't want to follow Hitler, but he had a he had a he had an idea that if you just take a simple thing and repeat it often enough, uh, even if it wasn't true, why people accept it. Well, now this is true, and if you can find the worst condition that you run into in Alabama, Mississippi, uh, or Louisiana, or South Carolina, where, uh, well, I think one of the worst I ever heard of is the president of the school at uh, Tuskegee, or the head of the government department there, or something, be being denied the right to cast a vote. And if you just take that one illustration and get it on radio and get it on television and get it on uh, in the pulpits, get it in the in the meetings, get it every place you can. Uh, pretty soon, the the fellow that didn't do anything but follow drive a tractor, he'll say, "Well, that's not right. That's not fair." And then that will help us on what we're going to shove through in the end. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. And if we do that, we will break through as uh, it'll be the greatest breakthrough of anything, not even except in this 64 Act. I think the greatest achievement of my administration, I think the greatest achievement in foreign policy, I said to a group yesterday, was a passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. But I think this will be bigger because uh, it'll do things that even that 64 Act couldn't do. Well, Mr. President, I certainly appreciate uh, you giving me this time, and I uh, certainly appreciate getting your ideas on these things. As I said, I just want to share it with you, and I want you to know that uh, we we have this feeling, but we have not uh, set on any particular person. We felt it Bob Weaver, Whitney Young, or Ralph, but somebody like that. Every one of those, every one of those people have my respect, and. Uh, uh, what what you do is this. You just say to them that I'm not going to send a message to the Congress and say that if you will give me this power, I will do this as a trade because I think that would do us all damage. But if I can get my urban and housing affair, you know what my intentions are. And uh, I've, I've got a pretty good cabinet. As far as I know, I'm going to keep them all probably except maybe the Secretary of Treasury. Uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know what's going to happen to the Attorney General. Uh, 
I've given good deal of thought to folks like Abe Fortas, a good deal of thought to folks like Clark Clifford, a good deal of thought to Cats Back, a good deal of thought uh, to uh, uh, all of those folks are pretty liberal and they're right on our question. I've appointed John Doerr in the charge of the department over there. But uh, I think most of the others are planning to stay, and I need them on these big programs, health and education and, and defense and uh, state. But uh, the one thing we want to do is shove through our housing reorganization and put them in charge of the cities. Yeah. Then New York City's got to come. Sit down and talk to these people. Chicago's got to come. New Orleans got to come. Atlanta's got to come. If they don't, uh, uh, they, they just can't move. And uh, then I think we'll have a good man that's trained, that's uh, come up through the ranks, that's merit, that's not on account of color, not on account of anything else, but he'll be there. Yeah. Well, this is one of them. And, uh, But two things you do for us now. You, you find the most ridiculous uh, ex uh, illustration you can on voting and point it up and repeat it and get everybody else to it. Second thing, is please look at that labor committee in the House and Senate. Please look at that health committee. Please look at that uh, 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 immigration committee. And let's us try to get health and education and poverty uh, through the first 90 days. Yeah. Well, we're going to be done that just to depend on our absolute support. Whitney's, Whitney's group can go to talking to them, and Roy's group can, and your group can. And they ought to tell the Ryan of New York, and they ought to tell the so-and-so from Philadelphia, and they ought to tell so-and-so from Atlanta, please get this bill reported. Because I don't think you have any conception of, of the proportion of assistance that comes to your people in these bills. I haven't pointed that out. I haven't stressed it. But I know that they, they will be, they have been, and will be a new support. You can figure out the what eight billion dollars in education, what one billion dollars in health, and what uh, a billion and a half in poverty do if it goes to people who earn less than two thousand dollars a year. Now, do you know who earns less than two thousand, don't you? And I'm part of this administration, but we talked about what we were going to do three years. And uh, we, we, we had to do it the fourth. We passed 51 bills last year. Now, I've got those messages up there the first time any president by January the 15th ever had a half dozen messages for the Congress. Most of them don't even have their State of the Union until after the inauguration. Yeah, that's right. But they're there, and they're ready for them to go to work, and we're not just going to talk. If they'll vote, I'm ready. We've got our recommendations. and. We talked the first three years of our administration. We promised, and we held it up, and people were getting be pretty disillusioned, I think, when uh, when I finally beat the Rules Committee and got civil rights out. Yeah, yeah I know. I think that you might have you might have had a lot more revolution in this country than you, you could handle uh, if we had uh, had that civil rights stay in that Rules Committee under Judge Smith. I know. That's a disillusion. Well, we talked about it three years, you know. But, but we just did something about it. So that's what we got to do now, and you get in there and help us. But I certainly will, and you know you can always count on that. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you. Thank you.